Coming up on this week's news, an electrical expert admits to losing sleep over the ticking time bomb of ageing and dangerous cutouts. A Lancashire couple faces a one-third of a million pound bill after DIY wiring burned down their neighbour's house. And we reveal the seven telltale signs of a cowboy renewable installer. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly, whether you're listening in the van on site or down at the wholesale counter. I'm Joe Robinson and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. This week, the recording studio is being powered by our friends over at Consumer Unit World with high stock levels of your favourite consumer units, including BG and free next working day delivery on orders over £150. We're being lit by Flex 7 with their lightning fast pre-wired modular lighting connection system that keeps your installation times razor sharp. And if you think you've spotted the two words that I've been challenged to slip into this week's show, comment with them below for the chance to win a prize. And while you're there, click the links to check out what our sponsors offer. A power network expert has admitted to losing a lot of sleep over the issue of ageing cutouts. Gordon McKenzie, who was a senior electrical engineer with Scottish Power Energy Networks until he retired in 2021, has made the issue of service terminations national news after he gave a hard-hitting interview to the BBC. He says he has been trying to raise the issue in the industry for over a decade. It goes back to 2014 when he began to notice that black Bakelite cutouts were failing in similar ways. He says that the phenolic resin insulating material breaks down, leading to a catastrophic failure of the unit. This generates an enormous amount of heat and energy, which can cause serious fires. He says failures of service heads are being reported on a daily basis, with 90% of the most serious incidents involving black plastic units. He says it's something that weighs heavily on his mind because the industry should be doing more to address the issue. It's not just that the phenolic resin becomes more brittle over time and catastrophically fails, the material can also become conductive as it ages. Not an ideal property for an insulating material. In fact, voltages on the surface of the cutouts can regularly exceed 50 volts, putting it in electric shock territory. Electricians are advised to check for such voltages using a contact tester pen. If they encounter any, they must report the problem to the DNO as a Category A condition. That's one which presents an immediate danger to life or property. Specifically, a problem with surface voltages carries the condition code A19. Modern grey plastic cutouts are not prone to the problems of degradation and surface voltages. EFIX raised the issue of phenolic degradation as it's known back in 2023. That's when Gary explored it in a special explainer video. More recently, I brought the subject under my purview in a CPD on the hidden dangers around supplier equipment and diverted neutral currents. I've put links to the video and the free training package in the show notes. In other news, a Lancashire couple has been hit with a £350,000 bill after dodgy DIY wiring led to fire which burned down two houses. A judge ruled that Turney and Sue Logan are liable for the blaze which destroyed both their own home and that of neighbour Christopher Stanley Smith. That's because they never asked an electrician to carry out or even check over an amateur wiring job done by Mrs Logan's ex-partner over a decade earlier. The two terraced houses in Calder Vale were destroyed by the fire in 2018. Judge Stephen Davies, sitting at the High Court in Manchester, said that the amateur wiring job was to blame for the fire and therefore the Logans are responsible for the destruction of their neighbour's house. That's because the couple failed to get it checked or redone by an electrician. The amateur electrics have been put in 13 years earlier by one of Mrs Logan's former partners. The court heard that he used a domestic extension lead for internal use to connect the house with the shed where they keep their freezer. As part of this operation, he removed the plug to feed the cable through a hole in the shed wall. He then reconnected it and plugged it into a socket in the house. He's said to have had no electrical training or aptitude and no particular enthusiasm or skill in DIY. Sue Logan said it never occurred to her that this work fell within the category of electrical works which required a qualified electrician. The judge said he was satisfied that on the balance of probabilities, the fire was caused by rodent damage to the cable. He went on to award Stanley Smith compensation of £350,000. Now, can you tell the work of a charger chancer, a battery bodger, or even a solar scoundrel? The growth in renewable installs in recent years has attracted a posse of cowboys, many of whom are riding roughshod over the safety standards. So Scottish Electrical Contractors Association Select asked its member firm iProtect for the most common issues they have to rectify with plug in points. The firm had no trouble coming up with the magnificent seven of mistakes. Top of these is basically putting charges 
charges where they shouldn't be. For example, fitting a unit pulling 32 amps where there's a 60 amp main fuse. When you've only got 60 amps to play with, you're sailing fairly close to the wind with a 32 amp charger. The rules say you should apply to get the fuse upgraded or if it's on a looped supply to get that rectified as well. They've also seen many suspect solar installs. For instance, inverters mounted on plasterboard or plywood instead of a fireproof surface. Undersized cables are also common with installers not following manufacturer's instructions. They see lots of connection issues with points inside isolators burning out because the cable's not been clamped down properly. Next in the list is a lack of interlinked smoke detection, especially in lofts. The alarm could be going off in the roof because there's a fire, and yet the customer is downstairs in the kitchen, none the wiser. They saw one EV charger install where the inverter was fed from a socket circuit and just doubled up with the socket outlets. Lastly, and possibly most shocking, they've seen forged insurance certificates for installations. I protect electrical manager Mike Cruikshank says the root of the problem is that rogue traders see EV charge points as a fancy socket outlet. They don't realise it's a specific technical install with its own rules. What have you seen on your travels in the Wild West? Let us know in the comments below. Now, some big personal news that's got me more excited than a schnauzer with two tails. I'm delighted to say that I too have joined the battery brigade. The Robinson household has just taken delivery of a shiny new sodium battery from Eleven Energy. Why sodium? Because it's more sustainable and ethical than lithium. It's made from an abundant non-toxic material. They get the sodium by extracting it from seawater or sometimes from salt mines. Sodium batteries are also more reliable than lithium in extreme cold and hot conditions. The 11 energy packs are controlled by an energy management platform which will optimize my usage. I got the idea when I saw the guys from 11 energy on one of our live streams in September. I'll pop the link to that episode in the show notes. And I'll also let you know how I get on with it in the coming months. Keep your eyes on our platforms for the install video. Still on all things sustainable and renewable, Solis, celebrating their 20th anniversary, have unveiled a host of new kit for commercial and industrial applications. One of the brand's big advantages is the ability of its hybrid inverters to handle a solar input of up to 200% of the inverter's rated DC power. So yes, you can connect twice as much solar as the inverter's rating. If you use a number of 2,000 operating hours a year, a Solis system can generate an extra 188 megawatt hours annually compared with typical designs. The company has also just unveiled its latest innovation, which it's describing as less a hybrid inverter and more a four-in-one powerhouse. Instead of juggling multiple devices, cables and control systems, the unit puts everything you need into one intelligent platform. The battery has smart charging and discharging. It stores energy when it's cheap and uses it when it matters most. There's a PV inverter for harnessing the sun's energy. There's on-off grid and genset switching, which means that you can move seamlessly between power sources. And finally, a smart energy management system, which optimizes usage based on your needs, tariffs, and load priorities. Coming this November is a 125 kilowatt version which boasts integration with an AI-powered cloud. It works with the recently upgraded Solis Cloud platform which learns site-specific consumption patterns, factors in weather forecasts, and tariffs, and automatically schedules battery charging and discharging. And if you've never installed their new 50 kilowatt hybrid inverter before, you could bag yourself a massive discount of 30% off your first order of one. Simply register your interest by filling in the form at the link in the show notes and they'll be in touch with some details and the discount code. Sync Energy is currently marketing its home energy management system. A major benefit to the system is there's the Sync Energy app, which brings together all the brand's many pieces of kit into one place, so you don't need multiple apps to control the different elements of your setup. These elements include its innovative solar diverters, hybrid inverters, battery storage, and EV chargers. Homeowners can store energy when it's cheapest or most abundant and use it when it's needed most, reducing energy costs. By storing solar energy, the system can reduce typical solar-only payback periods periods by 50% with just 25% additional upfront cost. The flow range can be configured to suit a range of property types and energy needs. There's a choice of 3.6 kilowatt or 6 kilowatt hybrid inverters and modular battery packs which are expandable to 36 kilowatt hours. In lighting news, Integral LED has reimagined that staple of the ceiling, the fire rated downlight. Most of them are simply tightly sealed tin cans, with some you can't even change the light source if it fails. But Integral's one is a bit cleverer than that. The Evo fire uses UK patented fire rated glass to stop flames from passing through the ceiling. Combined with powder coated steel and tempered glass, it delivers a premium finish with bezels under one millimeter thick. The range is fully third party certified to 30, 60 and 90 minute ratings, including timber and eye joist ceilings. You can pair the Evo Fire 85 with a GU10 or 50 mil module or select the Evo Fire Mini for GU11 or MR11 lamps. They'll even give you a seven year warranty. Let's 
material and replaceable lamps. That's sustainability by design. Still on sustainability, we're giving a shout out to Marshall Tuflex. The leader in trunking conduit has been a pioneer in this area for years. It makes much of its cable management kit from recycled material, much of which comes from PVCU windows. The company has now set itself an ambitious target. It says that by 2028, all its PVCU cable management kit will be manufactured using recycled material. They're calling on contractors to join this vision by installing PVCU trunking solutions with a minimum of 50% recycled plastic. The company is also cutting its operational carbon footprint. It's investing in energy efficient manufacturing, waste reduction and renewable energy sources to cut its carbon. Boss John Chamberlain says the brand wants to lead by example. Now, some exciting news from friend of the channel, Green Cable. If you're not familiar with the scheme, it's a mobile scrapyard that comes to you. The company gives you a green wheelie bin. There's no contract or service charge. You simply put in your offcuts of twin and earth and other non-ferrous metal. They collect it. They give you money. And that's it. The news is that Green Cable is expanding across the country at a rapid pace. The company has announced that it's now serving East Anglia, Bristol, Cardiff and, drumroll please, because this is huge, the big smoke itself, London. If you've signed up, they'll be in touch to advise the next steps to receiving your bin. If you work on large jobs, they'll collect from site and issue legally compliant documentation to prove responsible disposal of waste materials. The link, as ever, is in the show notes. In manufacturer news, Hager has opened a local distribution centre in Telford. For electricians, the 107,000 square foot facility will mean easier access to the company's electrical distribution kit. It's strategically located just a mile from the company's factory at Horton Wood. That's where Hager makes enclosures and custom electrical distribution equipment. The new distribution centre will significantly enhance logistics, production capacity and mean better customer service for the trade. It's also one of the first carbon positive buildings in the industry. It's got a Briam very good rating and an EPC rating of A thanks to its 300 square meters of solar panels which can generate 63 kilowatts of renewable energy. There's also a new tree landscape and two kilometers of hedgerows and wildflower zones to boost biodiversity. Boss Bruce Davis says the investment is a testament to the brand's confidence in the UK. A reminder that there's still time to avail yourself of a special offer this month from Velocity, maker of top tier tool bags and backpacks for the trade. If you buy one of four qualifying products from the brand during October then the company will add a 40 pound drill pod excess for free qualifying kit includes the firm's top of the range rogue 600 wheeler tool case this one has a superpower it's the world's first trackable tool bag the rogue 600 is equipped with a velocity connect tracker right out of the box so you can know where your kit is at all times it combines massive storage capacity while being super mobile as it's equipped with two sturdy all-terrain wheels and a telescopic handle it has two front tool sections for vertical tool storage and a larger open section on the rear for your larger tools. In total, it has no fewer than 55 pockets for all your gear. Other kit that qualifies for the deal are the Rogue 50 and the Stealth NB100 backpacks and the Rogue 20 XL service bag. To avail yourself of the deal, simply buy the kit and pop the drill pod excess into the basket as well. Then use the promo code EFIX to make the drill pod excess complimentary. You can use the code up to Friday the 31st of October. Now it's that great moment where we get to celebrate the sterling work being done by the next generation. Our Learner of the Week slot is brought to you by El Taco, German manufacturer of premium actuators, sensors and energy meters for smart homes. And our Learner this week is Luke Hornby. Luke is a Level 3 student at Tameside College in Mosley. He was recognised at the end of his Level 2 programme as the college's Learner of the Year. Alongside this, he has been making excellent use of his LinkedIn profile to showcase both his practical work and his eFix CPDs. Both are great examples of how a Learner can demonstrate to a future employer the type of apprentice they will be taking on. Luke should be incredibly proud of everything he's achieved and hopefully this recognition will help him towards securing an apprenticeship soon. Congratulations Luke on being the eFix Learner of the Week in association with El Taco. And now to the lighter side of the electrical news. Yes, it's time for a tea break with Quickwire and its range of incredibly rapid electrical connectors. EcoFlow has launched a solar panel hat for when you want power on the go. It captures energy from all angles. The manufacturer says it has a conversion efficiency of up to 24%. It says it's great for fishing, hiking, or going to the beach. But tester Richard Bagley has given it a thumbs down. He says it delivers too little power to charge his phone, and worse, he looks ridiculous. Dude looks like a runner-up in a Terry Pratchett lookalike competition. That's the lighter side of the news in our tea break with Quickwire and their range of incredibly rapid electrical connectors. Click the link in the description to check them out for yourself. 
And just before we get to your favorite bit of the show where I reveal last week's challenge words and winners, we want to thank our premium partners. We couldn't make the news without you. First up, for all your circuit protection needs, they're like having an Italian star striker in your premiership team. It's Ludum Palazzoli with their new award-winning Lumo Consume Unit and offering complete product support from their highly trained team at CPN Qdis. And with over 5,000 product lines from heating, lighting, ventilation to wiring accessories, if you need it, they've got it. It's electrical distributor CED Group. And the best thing to come out of Yorkshire since stainless steel, the home of EV Ultra and other groundbreaking and quality products, it's Doncaster Cables. Click the links in the show notes to find out more about these great brands. If you think you know the words that I've smuggled into this week's show, pop your guess into the comments. We'll take all the correct guesses and select one at random to be the winner of an eFix goodie bag prize. Answers submitted after about lunchtime on the Thursday after release will not be entered into the draw. Now let's reveal the winners of last week's challenge word competition. Last week's words were Calypso and Meringue. And the first person to come out of our electronic hat was J.R. McFerrin. So well done to you. Click the Get Involved link in the show notes to claim your prize. This week, the recording studio has been powered by our friends over at Consume Unit World. With high stock levels of your favourite consume units, including BG, and free next working day delivery on orders over 150 quid. And we've been lit by Flex 7 with their lightning fast pre-wired modular lighting connection system that keeps your installation times razor sharp. Don't forget to click the links in the show notes to find out more. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening. And until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there. And remember, there's no such thing as a talk calibrated arm.